ITA webcast helping you to prepare for your PMP CAPM exam. Your host is Dr. Tux Onombanjo. The topic today is critical path analysis and they're going to be in four parts. So this is just the first one. This is presented by IITA. We are 2470 Wendy Hill Road, suit 322A, Marietta, Georgia. Three zero zero six seven. Telephone is four zero four two zero seven three nine eight one. Critical path analysis. Why is critical path analysis important? What are the inputs? What are the processes? How can the output be used? What is P E R T? Part and how will can it be used to handle uncertainty? Yes, the benefits of critical path analysis is one to determine the critical path and to determine the non critical activities. To determine the critical path means there are many activities on the critical path. And those activities, the summation of their duration is the time it will take to finish the project. So the length of the project execution phase is the total duration of the critical path made up of the duration of each activity on the critical path. And that is the reason why Project Management Institute is choosing critical path analysis as a scheduling tool. The steps. The steps are first, identify the tax, sequence the tax, estimate the resources, both in terms of estimation of the duration and estimation of the resources that will be used for each task. Then do the analysis. The analysis will involve many things such as um, we're going to talk about buffer, we're going to talk about um, resource leveling and other kind of thing that will make your project v very good and very effective and using resources effectively. We're also going to talk about critical chain and other issues that are into scheduling. Then the next thing is to schedule, prepare the schedule and then optimize it. There are various forms of optimization that we need to do. We'll let you know this runs for four parts. It's just the, four, the part one. What are the inputs for critical path analysis? The first is tax. The second is sequence, sequencing of those tax and their dependencies. Example, you cannot build a house without first digging the foundation so digging comes before foundation laying foundation comes before roofing you cannot install plumbing plumbing devices in the building without having the, the dry walls or the walls you cannot have the electrical works without the dry walls so there are some tasks that need to follow themselves in a the, in the sequence and they have zero dependencies. Then also you need to know the durations of each task. Uh, we're, going to, we're going to try and see if this, uh, look at activity A. Activity A as, uh, okay, as I said, we're going to try and analyze the critical path using this table. At activity A depends on nothing. And it's for four. It's for four months. Activity B depends on nothing, and it's for three months. But activity C will require activity A to be completed, and it will now run for two months. The activity D also you can only start when activity A has been completed and that will run for five months. Activity E 
can only start when activity B is completed and it will run for two months. Acti activity F can only start when activity C has been completed and that will run for three months. Activity G can only start when activity D has been completed and that will be run for two months. Activity H can only start when activity E is completed and that will run for one month. Activity I can only start when activity activities F, G and H are completed and that will run for five months and that is the end of the project. Let's see the diagram. Activity A is represented by this arrow and it's for four months so it will put its output into this uh, pocket or this whatever this location and activity C depends on A for two months so when this is completed activity C will not commence it's for two months activity D also depends on A and for five months so when activity A is completed it's put its, its output here activity D also can start at the same time then activity F depend on activity C and it will run for three months. So it will put its output here. While activity D put its output here, then activity G is for two months, depends on activity D for two months. It will also put its output here. Activity B does not depend on anything because it is the starting point. It will run for three months and puts all its output here. Then activity activity E that depends on this complete completion will take off for two months and to also put whatever you know uh, in the output here. And activity H will run for one month after activity E is completed and uh, one month. But since activity I depends on activity F, activities F, G and H to be completed, so all of them will put their whatever they have in here. And activity I will now continue for five months and that will be the end of the project. Let's know how long will the project take. Right. If we sum the, this route we have here, this route we have here, right, that means it's going to be four months plus two months, which is six, plus three months, which is nine, plus five months, which is 14. So this, this route will take you 14 months. But if you go from this route, this way, this is 4 plus 5 for activity D, making 9, plus 2, making 11, plus 5, making 16. So this route will take 16 months. Okay, let's go through this route also. This is, uh, this is starting from here, B, activity B is 3 months, 3 plus 2, that is 5, plus 1, that is 6, plus 5, this is 11 months. So that means this route is the longest route, and that is the duration of the project, and that is the critical path. So all these activities on the critical path, uh, this act activity A is on the critical path, activity D is on the critical path, activity G is on the critical path, and activity I is on the critical path. Any delay on this, in any of these activities will delay the project, because the longest. So the critical path is 16 months, and it's represented by double arrows. Well, thank you very much. You can know more about us and what we do at iaienc.com. The aspect of project management and consulting, we do both in-house training and on-site training. We do virtual classroom training. So we want, we also do weekend, weekend courses on PMP and CPM. So visit us on their event registration on www.iaienc.com. And will be, and then also remember that this is in four parts. This is just the last. This is the first part. You still have three. Thank you, and um, bye bye.